from Jesus Christ. It doesn't flow to everyone, but it does flow to those who are of the city of God. And this river, the streams of His mercy, can you count His mercies? Can you count the number of streams of mercy that flow to you every single day, constantly cleansing you, constantly providing you a source of nourishment and strength? Yeah, you can't count them. And they make us glad. Oh, the waters of men, they rage, but it is settling. This gospel is so peaceful to our hearts. It's so settling. Let them roar. This gospel to us is the pure river of water of life that flows from the throne of God. And I want you to know this. Though we are believers in Christ, though we are redeemed by the blood of Christ, I want you to understand we are not exempt from trouble. We are not exempt from the hatred of the world. We are not exempt from temptations and the sin and our sin nature that often wars against our soul. But let this be our solace and comfort when we drink from these eternal streams of mercy. This is what makes us glad. Can you think of anything else that makes you if I could say it gladder than this river. Is there anything that could bring joy to your heart any more than the streams of mercy that flow from God? No, because we are troubled, these streams make us glad. And I'll tell you this, the more troubled you are, the more glad you are for the streams. Isn't that right? You found that to be so, when everything seems to be well, we, we really often discard the streams. Oh, when trouble comes, that's when the streams mean the most to us. We should drink from the river of God's provisions. For God has provided salvation. He not only purposed it, He purchased it. He purchased our salvation with the blood of His Son. With the death of His Son, He bought us, He redeemed us, He reconciled us to Himself. And then, in grace, what does He do? He comes to every one of us. He comes to every one of His elect and He applies that salvation. Has God applied this salvation to you? If you believe on the Son of God, you have had this salvation applied to you. And I want you to hold on to this truth. When you're in trouble, hold on to this one because it's vitally important that you understand that God dwells in you. God is not distant. Christ surely bodily is distant from us. He is on the throne of God. He is in that one place. He is a man. He is seated on the throne of God. That is a great distance. But I know this. His Spirit is always near to us. Because He lives in us. Isn't that what our psalm says? Look at this in verse 5. God is where? In the midst of God dwells in her. Paul said this, what? Know you not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own. Don't you know that you're not your own? That's what earthly men want. They want to be their own man. They want to be, have the, be the master of their own destiny. We don't. I don't want to be on my own. I want Him. I want Him. And we have Him because we are bought with the price of the precious blood of Christ. Therefore, what is the result of this? Look at verse 5 again. She shall not be moved. God shall help her in that right early. 
The result of God's purpose and purchase salvation when it is applied to us gives us this assurance. When the Holy Spirit dwells in us, we shall not be moved. Our Lord, the great shepherd of the sheep said, I give unto them eternal life and they shall, they shall never, what? They shall never be moved. They shall never be moved. Every believer knows and feels that if left to ourselves, we could not keep ourselves in the faith. How often have you felt as though it were your responsibility to keep yourself in the faith and fail? How long does our zeal last when pressed on by the troubles and sorrows of the world. It doesn't last long. We cannot keep ourselves, but our joy and peace is that we are not keeping ourselves. You and I are not keeping ourselves. I believe today because I am kept by the power of God. You still believe. Why is it you still come? Why? Oh, because you are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed at the last time. Lay this to heart when this world crumbles. And it will. When all you hold dear in this life is taken from you. When all your joys are turned to sorrow, when your sin rages within you, and you are overcome with temptation, when Satan and his hordes ride hard to accuse us, let this be our banner. Nothing shall separate me from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Paul said, Neither life, nor death, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, listen, nor any other thing. If I miss something, nor any other thing shall separate us from that love of God. That is where? In Christ Jesus. Nothing shall separate. We shall not be moved. I like that one song where David said this, The Lord is my rock. I shall not be greatly moved. He said, You know, I feel like I'm going to be moved, so I can't really, can't really be confident that I'm not going to be moved. But then later in the song, he said this, The Lord is my rock. I shall not. The more we think about it, the more we're secure we become. The more we believe it, the more we trust it. The more God tests us, the deeper our faith grows. There's no power in earth, no scheme of man could ever pluck me from His hand. For I am His. Is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. Let us find rest then in God's word. The Lord of hosts is with us. Look at that. Verse 7. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Now then, we get to our text in verse 8. In verse 8, we see this, the Lord is our refuge, the Lord is the river of our salvation, the Holy Spirit now dwells in us so that nothing shall move us from Him. And what does the Holy Spirit that dwells in us say? Look at this, this is the bidding of the Spirit of God to you. Listen, come. Come and do what? Behold the works of the Lord. It is good for us to remember and behold the works of God.
This is always the work of the Holy Spirit, isn't it? To point us to Christ. That's His job. That's His purpose in us. To always point you to Christ. If you have ever uh, that still small voice that comes in and says, look to Christ. You know who that is? That's the Spirit of God speaking. Whenever you're in trouble and you can't find a way out and the Spirit of God says, it is well. It is well with your soul. Look to Christ. Jesus told us when the Comforter shall come, He that I shall send to the Father, even the Spirit of the truth, which proceeded from the Father, He shall testify of Me. Any spirit that does not testify of Christ is not the Spirit of Christ. You got it? That is an important truth because there are many false spirits. There are many spirits going out in the world. Evil spirits. Seducing spirits. That speak of tongues and speak of miracles and speak of other men. They speak of man's goodness and man's uh, uh, value to God. No, that's not the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God always abases you and exalts Christ. Now that's the Spirit of God. And so then, when you are in trouble, when you are perplexed and confused and fearful, the Lord sends such troubles and storms into our life so as to seemingly contradict His promises. You found that out? You found out you've got a promise from God. What is that promise? All is for your good. All things work together for good to them that love God. And then we're called according to His purpose. I know my thoughts of you. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. I will not turn away from you to do you good all the days of your life. And then what happens? Trouble comes. Evil comes. And then you begin to doubt promises of God. How can this be? How can I suffer the loss so great and yet God say it's good? How can that be? In these times the Holy Spirit will come in in that small voice and say this. Come. Stop thinking about you. Stop dwelling on the waves of the sea and look to me. Come and behold. Consider the work of Christ. Isn't that what Paul says when he said about our race? He said, let us run the race that is set before us. How? Looking unto Jesus. The author and what? The finish of our faith. For the joy set before Him endured the cross, despising the same. Sat down on the right hand of God. Consider Him. Consider Him. This morning, are you fainting? Are you weary? Are you confused? Perplexed? Then let us hear the Word of God and consider Him. First of all, consider the desolation. He said, consider... The first thing, the works of the Lord, what desolations He hath made in the earth. This word desolation means ruin. What ruin has God made in the earth? The ruin that God has made in the earth was the result of man's sin. When Adam was made, he was placed in, the, in a garden, in a place that was perfect in every way. A world of paradise, not, not ruined, but perfect. Every tree, can you imagine this? Every tree yielded fruit. Can you imagine that? Going to the weeping willow and pulling off some fruit. Going to the, to the oak tree and pulling off some fruit. Every tree had fruit. What an amazing place this was. The world was not ruined. It yielded its fruit. 
There were no troubles. There were no sickness. There was no death. There was no separation from God. Adam walked with God in the cool of the day. This was the perfect environment with the perfect man. The perfectly created man, Adam. He walked with God in harmony. And there was joy. And there was peace. But when our father, Adam, saw the sin of our mother, rebellion stirred in his heart. And in open, willing rebellion, fully knowing what he was doing, knowing full well the consequences of his actions, he ate what God forbid. just recompense for sin. The ruin that fell upon all men by a just judgment of God was this. Utter and complete desolation. This is the work of God's judgment. This is the work of desolation He hath made in the earth. Thorns infested the ground. Now only few trees bear any fruit. There is only toil and trouble and sorrow now in the earth. What did Solomon say? He said of, of the earth, everything in it. What? Vanity of vanity. All is vanity. Is that not desolation? God had made everything good. But because of sin, judgment came and God desolated the earth so that none of it is profitable none of it is good to the soul of men none of it can save them. wherefore by one man's sin entered into the world and death desolation death by sin so this death and desolation, this ruin, passed upon all men full. All have sinned. Ruin is in the heart of man. So that no man can by any means do any good. No man by any means can merit God's favor. No matter, no, no amount of religion or moral reformation could please God. That's how ruined we've become. I know that religious men don't like to speak like this. Religious men want to give men a glimmer of hope. But they don't want to give them a glimmer of hope in Christ. They want to give a glimmer of hope in themselves. They want to give you a spark of, that there's something still good, in, something still worth redeeming in you. Something good. Something that God can use. Something God can take and apply to His work and make it good. Make the man good. No. Behold what desolation is God. Ruined. Man is ruined. God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth. Listen, that every imagination of the thoughts of the heart, imagination of the thoughts, not just the thoughts, but the thought before the thought, the feeling before the feeling, was what? evil continue. Ecclesiastes 9 and verse 3 said, This is an evil among all things that are done under the sun, that there is one event unto all. Listen, all are going to die. Solomon saying that this is an evil. This is madness. All are going to die. Everyone is going to face God. But what? 
Yes, also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil. And madness is in their heart while they live. And after that, they go to the dead. Isn't that utter madness? That is true ruin. Now I'm going to ask you personally, have you felt this? Have you felt the ruin and desolation God has made in your own heart? Have you been convinced by the Holy Spirit of your ruin? That all we do is sin. That all we are is sin. That from the sole of the foot to the crown of the head is no soundness, no goodness, no righteousness at all. And that what God did was just. You not know, see that? This desolation. Had you not seen that this is just right what God did? Natural men don't see that. They don't like it. They hate it. They blame God. What a horrible, evil God to make desolate the whole earth. No, what a just and holy and righteous God that made desolation in all the earth. You realize Adam was the best of us? God made man the best of us. To represent us all. He made one champion for us all. The most perfect man that could be created. And yet what did we find in this perfect man? We find his inability even in his perfection to sustain holiness and perfection before God. We who know the desolation of our nature know also of the hope of salvation. We understand something of salvation, don't we? Because we first understand what desolate people we really are. But here in this hope, the desolations God has made upon the earth testify to us of the holiness of God and that only those that are holy can be accepted of God, which is not possible by the works of man. It was by sin that we were ruined. And in our hearts, the flame of rebellion raged against God. But now, the greater work of God is displayed. The better work of God is displayed in what? Look at this second part. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He maketh what? Peace. Peace. When desolation was wrought, when sin entered into the heart, what came up? Rebellion came up. War against God. Isn't that what our father did? He blamed God. He was at war with God. He was at odds with God. But see here, God comes and He does a better work. He makes peace. It was man who sinned. It was man who offended the justice of God. It was man who declared war upon God. Therefore, in justice, God ruined him. But God, who is rich in mercy, also made provisions of peace. Have you ever known an offended party to make provisions of peace? No. Usually there are terms of peace that the offender needs to meet. God laid out those terms in His justice. Listen, God also fulfilled all the terms of peace. He made the wars to cease. Now because 
God is just. He cannot just extend peace unless first justice is satisfied. Payment must be made. The law must be honored. Sin must be punished. Therefore, God, before the worlds were made, before sin was committed by man, the Father in love, before His judgment was poured out on men, God in love chose people. Peace. God said, I will have peace on them. And then in a divine act of love, He gave them all to His Son. Of course, His Son had loved them as well. As much as the Father had loved them, the Son had loved them, and the Son willingly agreed to be the surety for them. So, He sent Christ into the world for one purpose, to reconcile, to make peace for all His people. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 18, All things are of God who hath reconciled us, made peace for us by Jesus Christ. Now how should that be? For He hath made Him to be sin, desolation. We might be made the righteousness. Behold the work of peace. That God that God broke the bow of His own justice. He did it by aiming it at Christ. By releasing the arrow of His wrath upon Christ. There is no more justice to be had. No more use for the bow. If there are no more arrows, what good is a bow? So he broke the bow of his justice. No more need for that. He broke the spear in two, the spear of his wrath. Remember, that spear was plunged into the side of Christ. And seeing that justice was satisfied, God looks at the spear and says, no more need for that. And he burned the chariot. Burn the chariot of his wrath by pouring out full vengeance on Christ. Oh, listen, tis done, tis done, the great transaction's done. God took my sin, put it on his son. God took his righteousness and put it on me. What a transaction. So now then, God looks at all of his people in what? Peace. Peace. But that's not how He found us, was it? He made peace long before we knew there was peace. Long before we desired peace. Long before we wanted peace. We walked in rebellion and hatred of God, despising His Word, despising His Son, just like every other man. Until one day God came and He broke our bones and cut our spear in sunder and burned our chariots. You see, I, I do never raise the bow to God. I'm the one to blame. I know this. If He had not made peace for me, there would be no peace. But I know this. When He came into our souls, He conquered us. He conquered our souls. And now our hearts are set in what? Peace. Our chariots are burned. Lord, to whom else shall we go? We're not one to ride anywhere. Are we? Burn that chariot. I ain't got any place to go. I'm firmly set on the rock of Jesus Christ. He had made peace for me. Believer in Christ.
consider this, we who were rebels are now servants. But better yet, we are more than servants, we are sons. Sons. Sons of God. Now there will be wars upon the earth, there will be sorrows, there will be griefs. But this is our hope. He hath made peace by the blood of His cross. Though we were ruined, now we are what? Restored. You know what Jesus said? He said, I, I restored that which I took not away. I restored it. We're at peace with God. So what does God now say to us? Listen to this. Verse 10, be still and know that I am God. Be still. Isn't that the most difficult thing to do in trouble? In conflict. In sorrow. Be still. God says, look at the desolation I've made and look at the peace I've accomplished. Isn't that what Isaiah said? He said, look to the rock from which you were hewn and the pit from which you were dig. We constantly are looking at these things, being reminded of them so that we might just be still and know God is my refuge. And I'm sure of this. I'm sure that God will be exalted. Are you sure of that? It don't look that way, does it, right now? It doesn't look as, as though God is exalted anyway. You mark it down, God will be exalted. And everyone raising their fist right now will soon bow. They will soon bow. Every last one of them. But I know this, He will also be exalted in the earth right now. now this means that He will call all of His people. He will be exalted by His people right now in the earth. May God give us a heart to exalt Christ. Why? He made peace. He is my refuge. And very present in Pray God bless us.